Hi peeps and welcome back to Crash Tube. Today we are going to look at the new commanders that just came out and we are gonna start with the first one of today, Silver Quill Statement. I'm super excited for this one. So this one is the black and white commander box. So I would say let's go and look what's in the box. Okay, here we are with the commander box from Silver Quill Statement. I'm really excited to open this box so I would say let's first look at the box itself because if we look at previous commander boxes they kind of look different so first of all they are smaller and they are definitely thicker so from what i understand first of all they removed the the big the big card demo card but they swapped it out with a smaller card so i would say let's look at this oh also something i don't know maybe it's not important for many of you guys but i like this that you can open the box now in a safer way without worrying to damage the whole box so this is useful also an improvement and the lid look at that um look at that so also new is that we got a little booster box now so where you can Holding your cards if you want to. Uh, I'm definitely not gonna use them myself because I don't really trust cupboard. But hey, it fits in 100 card sleeved, so that's already something. Apparently, it doesn't fit in double sleeved cards, so just keep that in mind. And then, first thing that is pretty new in here is that we got this very heavy card, and it literally is heavier and thicker than any other magic card so very important you cannot use this one to play with uh, so this is like fun for a display but you won't be able to put this one in your deck but don't worry the wheel card will be inside of this so there we go here we got the wheel card um they damn a lot of different packaging like they don't put everything together now so you got the tokens then we got the, the special display card, we got a little rule book, and a, yeah, life counters. Might be fun for new players. Like, this is nice, like little... I, I don't really use this, but hey, if you're a new player, this is perfect. You can start playing out of the box straight away, you don't have to buy anything else. So yeah, they're taking care of people that just start playing, so I would say let's open this first to take a look at the tokens inkling and those are also double sided so we also got treasure tokens also useful we got horror spirits more treasure tokens more inklings so yeah those are the tokens and then let's take a look at what cards we got so very important of course first of all we got the Brina commander uh, this is also the one that is on top of the box, but then we also got the other foiled commander option Belisa Fang of Silver Quill. So um, I'm gonna start talking about both, both of these cards, but I would definitely say if we look at the deck list The deck is gonna be more focused on the strategy of Brina than the strategy of Belisa um, if you want to start building your own deck, I think that Felisa could be really really interesting But the deck is not really built for her. She's gonna be a fun card for the 99 other cards, but to have her to play with as the main commander with all of these cards I don't really believe in her. I definitely think that this one is more fit to join as a commander and her as the 99 other cards first off I would say let's take a look at the first commander the commander that is on the box the one that most people are going to play Brina the demagogue demagogue it's a legendary creature bird warlock so it's another wizard uh, it's a warlock so that's pretty cool uh, I love playing warlock on world of warcraft so let's see if this one is good so for three mana one gray one black one white one tree flying Okay, that's already great whenever a player attacks one of your opponents 
If that player has more life than the other than another of your opponents, that attacking player draws a card and you put two plus one plus one counters on a creature you control. That's a lot of text. This might be a little bit confusing. In short, they need to attack someone that isn't you. They need to attack one of my opponents. Okay, so that's the first thing. Attack an opponent that isn't me, an opponent of mine. Second rule, they can only attack an opponent with not the least amount of life. All right? So if I am the opponent with the least amount of life, they can attack all other opponents. If there is someone with less life than them, so someone that has, let, let's say I have 30 life, two other players got 40 life, and there is one player with 20 life. They are not allowed to attack the player with 20 life, okay? So not the one with the lowest amount of HP. They need to attack someone that doesn't have the least amount of HP, that isn't the owner of this card. If they do that, they will be drawing one card. And me, as the owner of this card, I am going to put two plus one plus one counters on any of my creatures. Really, really strong. So the interesting thing is that this effect also works for me. So if I attack an opponent, I am gonna be able to also draw a card and put plus one plus one counters on my creatures. So the interesting thing is that only there, there are already so many commanders that are gonna make you draw cards and gonna make your opponents draw cards if they do not attack you. So that's already a really strong combo. There are many decks like that. Some of them even got banned. <laughs> so yeah, because they are so strong. But the interesting thing is that this one is also on top of that gonna put a plus one plus one counter on both of your creatures that you can pick. You can pick one creature, put two plus one plus one counters on them. Or you can be like, okay, I'm gonna put it on all my commander. I'm gonna try to kill someone with commander damage. It's possible. Because keep in mind, if you got three other opponents, you're gonna draw a card and you are gonna do plus two plus two. Then your opponent is gonna do the same thing. They are gonna do damage to one of your opponents. You, they are gonna draw a card, but you are gonna put the plus one plus count, one counters. So that's pretty much insane. But I'm gonna be honest, that's not gonna be the main target of this deck. The main target of this deck, in my opinion, is gonna be politics. You're gonna try to build a wall around around your own life points that they are not gonna want to attack you, but they're gonna try to attack all your opponents because they want to draw cards. People that want that wanna play magic do wanna draw cards. It's one of the most important things in magic. Drawing cards. So that's what they wanna do. That's what we are going to give them. So they are gonna try to keep us with them as long as possible. The other option is Felisa, Fang of Silver Quill. So let's look at her. Flying, 3-2, Mentor. When this creature attacks, put a plus one plus one counter on target attacking creature with less power. So okay, if smaller creatures are attacking with her, like for example, let's say she's attacking together with a 1-1, one -one, she's gonna put a plus one plus one counter on that 1-1. One -one. So it's gonna become a 2-2. Two -two. Uh, next turn, it's gonna become a 3-3. Three -three. If it attacks again with her and after that she can't do it again because she's gonna be weaker than the creature attacking with her. So the creature needs to be smaller. Alright? Makes sense, right? Whenever a non-token creature you control dies, if it has counters on it, with X tapped 2-1, white and black, inkling creature tokens with flying, where X is the number of counters it had on it. Damn, this can be thick. This can be really, really interesting. I can definitely see a lot of people uh, building decks around putting plus counters on all the creatures to try to kill people with the inkling tokens. Is this deck that we that we just bought? Is this deck gonna build around this? No, there are not enough cards that are gonna work together with this one as a commander. It's a great card. I really hope that many people are gonna build decks around this thing to see how strong this one can get. But if we wanna go 
uh, and optimize all the cards that are inside of this I would say you definitely need to play this one as the main guy or girl because this one is a girl apparently Rina but this one is definitely gonna be great as one of your 99 cards so she will still be in the deck BAM so I would say let's go and take a look at all the other 99 cards I'm just gonna go through these like this so this one is pretty important because it could also be like okay this is a legendary creature can i make a commander deck around this one you could uh, because this one is literally a ghostly prison on a creature um, so you could go and build a whole deck around this one i don't think if it's gonna be really strong but it's possible of course so this is also a new guy so nils discipline and forcer then we got my promise of loyalty so i'm gonna try to remember which one are new cards okay we got auto of shadow this one is pretty interesting the only problem is so first of all for five mana a tree tree sh uh, shape warlock uh, enters the battlefield exile all cards from an opponent's graveyard or opponent's graveyard so all the graveyards are being exiled from all opponents already a good thing Really good. So you can play something from any of the graveyards one time after exiling it. Uh, flickering this card will be pretty hard because you will have to wait for them to have a whole graveyard again so you can exile and steal something out of their graveyard. But if you build a deck more around them milling and discarding, you can definitely use this card in one of those decks. For, for this deck, it's definitely gonna be a one-time thing. I don't think we're gonna flicker this guy. I'm gonna go through all these cards because yeah, we can't really talk about all the cards, otherwise it's gonna take more. Uh, Thane the Broker, also really interesting. Fun thing is that this card, if you look at it, the first thing that you think is like, oh, this could be a win comp. Definitely. If you were to be able to create infinite mana, you could make a very clunky way how you could win with this card so this one is really strong it works well in the deck but it's not gonna be like the insane win calm in this deck i think it's gonna be really really hard to win with this one but it's possible uh -huh. keen duelist a new card that is really interesting as well so this keen duelist for two mana a two two creature human wizard at the beginning of your upkeep, you and target opponent each reveal the top card of your library. Uh, you each lose life equal to the mana value of the card revealed by the other player. You each put the card you reveal into your head. Really interesting card. This one could be good. And it's each time at the beginning of your upkeep, you can pick a target. So, politics? Heck yeah. Study. Ink Shield is probably my favorite new card in this deck. This card is 100% new and it's pretty insane. So this card is for 5 mana a fog. So what is a fog? So prevent all combat damage that would be dealt to you this turn. So you'll be like, oh damn, uh, fog is normally only 1 green mana to do the same thing. But this one for one white, one black, three gray mana is also saying for each one damage prevented this way create a two one white and black inkling creature token with flying so one of these guys that's pretty insane if you ask me this card could win games if you can hold five mana open and your opponent is stepping out everything to kill you and then you're like nope so for example let's say let's say that it would even only hit for six damage that means that you're gonna get six two ones that are flying in their turn so when your turn comes you can hit them back for 12 damage flying damage so you're literally doubling the damage that they would do to you so i think this card is pretty pretty insane Okay, okay guys, Gideon, I really like this card, it's nice to see a reprint of him, but this card is pretty much useless in this deck. 
So first things first, first card that I would remove from this deck and swap out for another card would be Gideon. This card is literally not gonna work in this deck. Um, <clears throat> it's a fun, it's a fun planeswalker, but yeah, no, trust me, trust me. If you swap out cards and you don't want to keep the deck as it is, I would remove this one. Lamassu, Lamassu, not a great card, if you ask me. Oh boy, I didn't expect that they were gonna reprint Oblation. I gotta say, not a good card. Definitely not a good card. You are playing with white, if it would be mono white I would understand, but you also got black. So you got so many more different cards that could do so many better things. Because what you're doing is, on instant speed for 3 mana, the owner of target null and permanent shuffles it into their library. Then draw 2 cards. What kind of thing has to be on the field that you are feeling confident enough that that opponent can draw 2 cards? I don't know. I don't think this card is worth it. Uh, there are definitely better options like uh, Pet to Exile, uh, Sword of Supply Shared. So, yeah, no, no. Remove this one if you want to. Uh, Selfless Squire. This one is really good. Really good card, this one. Falcon Leon. Hmm. Oh, Together Forever. Great card as well. Great. Windborn Muse, look at that. So we got another ghostly prison trigger on a creature. So yeah, we're definitely gonna build up the pillow, the uh, pillow castle so to make sure that they don't attack us. Oh, okay, interesting. I need to talk about this card as well. This card is no joke, the highest value card in this deck. This card goes for around 16 euros, so uh, between 16 and 18 euros. I'm sure it's gonna drop price after release uh, But this card pretty good like there are many cards like this for all the The enemy colors so this one is the black and white one and it says all the white creatures you control get plus one plus one All the black creatures you control get plus one plus one So for example our commander would get plus two plus two because he's black and white and then it says, whenever you cast a white spell, you may tap target creature. Okay, that's great. But then, whenever you cast a black spell, you may destroy target creature if it's tapped. If you play the two color creatures like aka or commander, you can first be like, okay, it's a white creature, I tap a creature. But it's also a black creature, so now I'm also going to destroy a tapped creature. You can literally remove everything every single time when you play a uh, black and white creature. Utter End, great card as well. Nice to see this one being reprinted. Oh my god, okay. I'm not gonna be too hard on the deck because I feel that the deck is pretty good. But there are two cards to remove. First of all, Gideon, for sure. Second one, Coveted uh, Jewel. I dislike this card. I definitely don't like what it does. I don't like the risk that it's taking and it's 100% working against the whole strategy of not wanting opponents to attack us and rewarding them for attacking other guys. What this card does is when uh, for 6 mana an artifact that says when converted jewel enters the battlefield draw 3 cards. Oh my god for 6 mana and you can draw 3 cards and it says tap a 3 mana of any uh, any one color insane insane but if you keep reading it says whenever one or more creatures an opponent controls attack you and aren't blocked that player draws three cards and gain control of covered that jewel yikes no no there is not even we are not even sure that we are gonna gain this card back so you're going to pay 6 mana to draw 3 cards, maybe tap it and then your opponents are gonna steal it and they are gonna get it for free. They're gonna get exactly the same as you get but for free. Don't play this card. If you are going to ask your opponents, okay, uh, if you don't attack me, you get one card and I get plus 2, plus 1, plus 1 counters. 
you're like, okay, cool, cool, I can draw a card. But then you tell them as well, but if you attack me, you get this that can tap for 3 mana. And you can draw 3 cards. Well, yeah, they're, they're gonna hit your face. They're, they're not even gonna care about the other effect. They, they're gonna hit your face, they're gonna steal your artifact. Do not play this one. Remove this one, burn it, uh, sell it, get rid of this card. Trust me. It's not worth it. <laughs> okay, so mana. Victory Shimmies. I like this card. I don't know. Untap Victory Shimmies during each other place. Untap step the play of your choice at one mana. I think this one is really interesting. It can do it can be a lot of uh, politics. If there is one of your friends, well opponents that is missing one mana to do to summon like a big creature, you can tell them, well, I can give you the mana if you promise me that that creature is never going to attack me. That way you're going to use their power to kill your other opponents. So you can definitely be really smart with this card. If you play it well, you use politics, this is gonna be a card that you are going to enjoy. Oh nice, we got an cave of Kola, uh, Koilos, so good card, good card to, to see. Right, and... Ooh, Mikokoro, center of the sea. Interesting to see this reprint. So it adds one mana, or you can pay two mana and tap it. Each player draws a card. Insane to see this on a card, uh, on, on the land. Really cheap, people are gonna adore you for that. Definitely interesting. And we got Skyland, Secret Rendezvous. Fracture, destroy target artifact and shaman or place walker. Amazing card as well. I really like this one. Also like the art. Skyland, Amber, Land. Beach. Ghostly Prison! <laughs> I've been talking about Ghostly Prison so much and now there is actually a Ghostly Prison. So yeah, Ghostly Prison is pretty much gonna be like the, the second commander of this deck. So the whole strategy of making it really hard for your opponents to attack you, rewarding them for attacking your opponents and not you. Uh, this whole ID, this is gonna enforce that whole ID with your commanders. Good card. Uh, Marshall. So this one is gonna goat uh, one of the creatures of your opponent. So th there are a few of those. I think there is one white and one black that is gonna um, strengthen the creatures of your opponent. So curse of disturbance. So this one is gonna be a curse. So really interesting as well. For the whole strategy, you are going to uh, enchant a curse, an aura curse on a player. Whenever enchanted player is attacked, create a 2-2 black zombie creature token. Each opponent attacking that player does the same. So each time when someone is gonna attack one of my opponents that I did curse, those people are also gonna be rewarded by attacking that person by getting a 2-2 zombie. Not the strongest effect ever, but it's another way how people are gonna be like, oh, I don't wanna attack this guy, I'm gonna attack this one, it's gonna give me a 2-2. Really interesting. And there we got the other enchant aura. So this one is also gonna goat the opponent's creature. Uh, Arcane Signet. Good to see this one. I really hope that they keep printing this card in all the commanders because we need more arcane insignias. Good to see that one back. Mm -hmm. Also keep in mind, not that those cards are bad, but most of them should know these cards. You can pause the video if you want to take a longer look at these cards as well. So really good to see all those stones and the signets. Uh, there is a lot of mana ramp and I really like to see that. Of course, a soul ring. So look at that, there is a lot of RAM. Baron Moore. Bazooka Bog. Really good card. Um, anyone that is playing any uh, black commander should add a Bazooka Bog land in their deck. This card is really, really good. So it enters tapped, it can tap for one black mana, but when it enters the battlefield, it exiles all cards from target player's graveyard. So you can target the player and remove their whole graveyard. Keep in mind, even if it's not a deck that is mainly focused on graveyard, 
uh, playing with graveyard it's always gonna be good to remove that graveyard they're never gonna be able to play anything back from that graveyard so always safer always better so do it Ooh, command tower with the new art look at that i like the new art okay opal also for block passage also useful are they gonna put the guild gate in here? <laughs> I wonder. I'm sick seeing guild gates in these boxes. Oh! And here we got the basic lands. So, yeah, swamps and plains. I like the art though. Good art. So, there we go, peeps. Those are all the cards of this deck. Bam! Bam! I would prefer that you remove this card and you put a basic land in it. It's, the basic land is at least gonna tap for mana and you're not gonna lose it. So remove these two and then cards that I would like to show to you, cards that I don't think that many people know, specifically the first one is this one, Trichillion. Trichillion is a pretty old card but it's not really expensive so I really like to show you guys cards that not many people know of. And the reason why I know about this card is because I already have another uh, blue and green deck that is focused about putting counters on creatures and adding counters to them. And this one is gonna work really well with Brina the Demigorger as our commander. Because what does this one do? It's for 6 mana a 1-1, one, one. so it sounds horrible. It's an artifact creature, but... Trigillion comes into play with 3 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it. So in reality, this one is literally for 6 mana, a 4-4. Four, four. Okay? But what you can do, you can remove a plus 1 plus 1 counter from Trigillion. Uh, Trigillion this 1 damage to target creature or player. This is really interesting. You can do an insane amount of things with this card. Specifically, if you got a deck that has a way how to keep getting counters so for example with this one because your commander is gonna give each turn if everything goes well each turn you're gonna be able to put two plus one plus one counters on any of your creatures so you can do it on this one and you can stack them up and let's say this creature could become a one one with seven plus one plus one counters on it um, at any time when there is like a really annoying 1-1 one, one creature on the field, you can just remove a counter, boop, ping it, kill it, and remove one of your 1-1 one, one counters. Also, if there is a player being really, really low, you can do all of this at instant speed. So you can keep this as a threat. If people are like, oh yeah, uh, I'm gonna attack you, um, I can be like, are you sure? Are you sure? If you... If you target me to attack, I'm gonna ping and kill your creature before you can even attack me. So this one is a really cool card, really useful. A lot of ways how you can use this card. I would add this one. Not a lot of people are gonna be prepared for this card. And this one actually won me a few games as well. So I did test it. I did test it as well. <laughs> Another one, uh, this one are probably is gonna be more known and more people are gonna be using this one already is trionic resonator so this one is an artifact for two mana you tap it for two and copy target triggered ability you control what is a triggered ability a triggered ability is always going to be a card that starts with words like when whenever or at all right so let's look at this card whenever hold on whenever perfect so what it's going to do it's gonna copy the effect so i would always copy this effect when you are attacking so what it means is that instead of drawing one card and putting two plus one plus one counters on one of your creatures you are gonna be for two extra mana be able to draw two cards and put four plus one plus one cards on one of your creature uh definitely useful i this, this is a no-brainer um normally i don't like to play cards that are depending on other ones but because it's your commander i feel this card is definitely gonna be more safe to use and you will you will never be dissatisfied to use this effect every single time this deck is pretty fair there is a lot a lot of ramp um 
I would definitely, if I would really optimize this deck, I would add more board wipes because there are not enough board wipes in this deck. They definitely need more board wipes. That's pretty much all the cards inside of this deck. So yeah, I hope you're excited. And I hope that the cards that I showed you that you might be adding to this deck might give you some crazy ideas. So here we go. This is the end of the video of this review of this amazing commander. Let me know in the comments if you're going to buy this one or if you're going to buy one of the other five new commander boxes. And for next week, next episode, we are going to look at the next commander. And the next commander is going to be Prismary Performance, the red blue commander box. So I hope you're excited for that one. And I hope to see you next time. And do not forget, I'm Crash and I'm out. Bye bye. So, this is the end of the video. It's a freaking miracle that you were able to watch this until the end. But you know what? If you are already in pain, why not watch more of Crash Tub videos to continue the suffering? And if you really hate yourself you could even subscribe to get notified when he uploads more videos. Well this was the outro. I'm out. Are you still here? Why? Click on my tie to subscribe hop hop okay I'm really gonna go now.